The first thing we did, Randall took me out to dinner with the director and sitting around this table in my memory of it is Jerry Lopez, Ken Bradshaw, very possibly Mark Fu, and I can't remember if he was at that first dinner or not. But I'm sitting there and I'm like, where, how, how did this happen? Like, is this? Hello and welcome to the UK Surf Show. We are your hosts. I'm Pete. And I'm Leighton. On this episode, we've got another legend of surf culture. We've got the one and only Matt Adler, who plays Rick Kane in North Shore. Because he's Rick Kane, bitch. (laughs) Yeah. So now we've got two of the most iconic people that have been in surf films for, for us. Amazing. Yeah, Rick and Turtle. And as you're hearing this chat, they've been on the beach together and people just are like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Imagine that. If you were stood on a beach and you turned to your left or right and there's Turtle and Rick stood next to you, you'd be like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, absolute madness. Can you imagine that? Like, they must go out on the beach and mess with people. They must do. They must be, I wonder if they re, like reenact the scene where Turtle's giving him the advice on the beach. Yeah, his <laughs> favourite line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, uh, well, with your little microphone break up at the beginning when he thought you called him Nick K. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Mike, we've had a few technical issues before we started, didn't we? And then um, when, so the f- very first question, how did you end up playing the role of Rick Kane? And it, it kind of... Something happened with the mic, right as I said, Rick, and it came out as Nick, Nick <laughs> Kane. <laughs> I reckon you just called him Nick Kane. Really. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that film enough times to know his name is Rick Kane and not Nick Kane. <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh anyway. It did, sound, it did sound like Nick, but it did that sort of like you know that thing that <laughs> yeah fantastic oh, uber okay. uber mega star who we absolutely love and respect and the first question goes wrong <laughs> all right steve how's it going <laughs> <laughs> what, what are they do only falls on horses call him dave because i've ready dave <laughs> um yeah but don't forget before we get into this episode head over to north shore and oh, no. on. <laughs> <laughs> It's all going wrong. Oh, that was so good. I'm so glad you did that, Len. <laughs> North Core, head over to North Core. Yeah, don't forget, before we get into this episode, head over to North Core and use the code SSUK15, and that will get you 15% off anything you order at North Core. Also, we have a new discount code available for the months of March and April. Yeah, we've got a discount code for Hexi Traction. That's right. If you head over to RS Pro and type in the discount code, the UK Surf Show, all uppercase with no spaces, you'll receive 15% off Hexi Traction Grip for the deck of your board. Yeah, the alternative to using wax, you just put these on. And there's a size guide on there and everything. It'll tell you how many you'll need for different size boards. Then you don't need wax on your boards anymore. Yeah, but it's just for these two months. So it's the months of March and April 2021. So enjoy our interview with Matt Adler. Here we go. It's really good to uh, have you on the show, Matt Adler. Nice to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we, what we wanted to do is like we know you done absolutely loads of stuff in the film industry and you're still working within the industry now but because it's the uk surf show we mainly wanted to talk to you about your surfing and north shore that's understandable so hey how, how did you end up getting the role as nick kane nick kane rick kane <laughs> did you say nick kane oh uh, i know it, it kind of went out there rick kane <laughs> I don't know, guys. This might be the end of the interview. I mean, I know you're big fans and everything, but I mean, that's like that's like boner number one. Yeah. I will. Uh, I'm going to let that slide. <laughs> so I was uh, before the North Shore. I did a, a movie called Flight of the Navigator. It was a Disney movie directed by uh, Randall Kleiser. And Randall was going to go on to produce the North Shore with his friend Bill Phelps directing. And he, after sort of the post-production process of Flight of the Navigator, he called me, Randall, and he asked me if I happened to surf. 
And I said, yeah, I do surf. And he said, well, would you, you know, make an audition tape? Will you make a tape of you surfing and come in and audition for this movie? And he sort of told me about the movie and I was like, absolutely I will. So I got a buddy and we went down to the beach and it was kind of, you know, it was an okay day. And I just surfed and, you know, got a couple of waves on tape and sent it to Randall. And, and he was like, oh my God, you really, you do surf. You know, he very inexperienced about surfing at the time, even though he had a house in Hawaii, but he, I guess he was not necessarily inexperienced about surf, but he was just surprised that this actor he knew could surf at all. Then I did the, you know, the sort of acting part of the audition and they offered me the part. Wow. So did you grow up surfing then? Uh, yeah, I started when I was 12, 13 years old. Oh, so yeah, you did. You started quite young then. I did. And I, and I was really into it. I mean, I tried to surf every day before school and anytime there was waves, like I was really into it. And so for that job to come along was like, I just, it was beyond dreamlike. Yeah, because um, when when we were chatting to John, he said after that movie happened, you didn't you didn't receive it as well as sort of he received it afterwards. Is that right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I guess you could put it that way. He he really articulated it very well in terms of how you know the response to the movie. You know, I was still I was pretty young. I was twenty, and I think it was you know in looking back at it, it was. It was difficult for me to accept the the surf community's overwhelming reaction to the movie being, um, I think, as John put it, like, you know, do these these guys are coming up to me and they're they want to talk about the movie, but they also want to, like, criticize the movie or make fun of parts of the movie. And I didn't I just wasn't good at understanding that, like, that wasn't a personal attack on me, you know, or because I was the star of the movie feeling like they're making fun of me. You know what I mean? And I, and I, I wasn't prepared for that. Like I didn't, I think my ego had trouble processing that as, as fandom and love for the movie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose, I suppose like if it's like a dream like role for you and you're a surfer, so it's, you know, the perfect kind of role for you and you've right. invested all that time in it as well and then for somebody to say oh he takes off on a on a left and comes out on a right or you know just picking on silly things i suppose you are going to take it personally aren't you i i think it's hard it's just hard not to like i don't know you know how else to to take it i mean what what do i say to that person like oh well you know that really wasn't my job on the movie but, <laughs> yeah. but feeling like but also feeling like kind of pissed off like about like well who's who who let that slide who, how, how come that happened? You know, who let that slide that a guy t- takes off right and, and then surfs the left? Like, wasn't there somebody watching that in the video, in the editing room? Yeah. You know? yeah. But, but I mean, that, that's the minutia of it. The, the overarching thing was just like, I, I think you're right. Like I, I just wanted it to be good. And the way that young men, you know, young surfers like deal with each other, you know, can be pretty harsh. And yeah. I felt like, like I just didn't kind of just didn't want to be around that attention to that movie. Unfortunately, you know, to my uh, detriment. Yeah, well, there's no way you could have known at the time that it was going to turn into the cult classic film that it is now turned into. You know, as I said, there's so many people all over the world. There's fans of North Shore everywhere, quoting characters, quoting lines. You know, you still hear it. You you go into. Uh, a beach car park where we are and you you know you still randomly every now and then you'll hear someone say something like oh he busted sticky shred so bad or something like yeah. that <laughs> yeah you still it's hear amazing all, i suppose looking back if you'd known that then it would have been full embrace and it'd been like oh whatever you know it's it's just been such a film as we were saying before it's been such a film that's just grown and grown with love over the years yeah it's been a ma- massive part of our life and in particular our surfing life of course so feeling like that when it first came out how did you feel about it when you found out it's kind of turned into a cult classic then as unsuccessful as it might have been in the theaters and when it first came out it was still like you know if you spend any time in the beach communities as you guys know it was all it was always a popular movie you know love it or hate it it was people wanted to talk about it in the surfing world. So I, the more really it, it was just this sort of John, I think is the one who sort of taught me 
how to love people's reaction to the movie, how to to acknowledge and feel the sort of love of the fans of that movie and let it be okay, you know? And I couldn't tell you specifically when. I think John mentioned a, a, a particular screening that, that we had gone to. But I, I don't know. I, I think it's also just sort of maturity on my part and growing up and not being so attached to to the way you know it was accepted and yeah and just then what and then and also just hearing just being for years and years and years hearing stories like just like you were about to sort of tell me Leighton about like you know that your how much the movies meant to you and you know I'm sure a lot of your 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 buddies and your surf mates and oh yeah that story after story about guys but you know I started surfing because of that movie and I always thought like that was my dream to go to the north shore and like just be starting to take some pride in being involved in how great that it was me that I get to be the guy that you know was in that movie and and just embracing the love that 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 people have for it it feels good it feels much better than the alternative you know yeah yeah well i think um most surfers dream is is the storyline of North Shore. You know, you, you go to Unbelievable Surf and some cool dude trains you how to surf. <laughs> you know, that, that would just be the dream. <laughs> I know. You get fully karate kitted into, like, being the best on the North Shore. It's, like, it's crazy. Yeah. I saw something or read something. You had to do a load of reshoots because the role of Keanu was someone else, first of all, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was cast with this very very lovely young actress named Tina. And uh, we shot for a couple weeks, Oh, three or four or five scenes. Maybe it was, it was not, it was not so onerous or I think ultimately they wouldn't have done it, but I think they caught in time the fact that it, it just kind of wasn't jiving, you know, it just wasn't really working with her. And, and we didn't really have a lot of conversation about it. In ter- like me, in ter- like I wasn't really involved in those conversations and then um, the next thing I knew, I, I was being told that um, Nia Peoples was coming in and how lucky for us all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, had you ever surfed in the North Shore before? Had you ever been over to Hawaii and surfed before? I had been in Hawaii. I'd been to the Big Island and surfed when I was uh, in high school, but I'd never been to the North Shore. It was my first experience. Wow. So that means, yeah. So when you got there, what, what was it like surfing with, um, with all the surf legends? Well, first of all, I have to just tell you, like when I, when we, when I first arrived, the first thing we did, Randall took me out to dinner with the director and sitting around this table of, in my memory of it is Jerry Lopez, Ken Bradshaw, very possibly Mark Fu. And I can't remember if he was at that first dinner or not, but I'm sitting there and I'm like, where, how, how did this happen? Like, is this, <laughs> is this for real? Like, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. And, and the first time I surfed, the actual first session I surfed was with Jerry Lopez and Ken Bradshaw. And Jesus. like, these guys are on my walls. These guys are, are posters on my walls. I've been staring at them my whole life. So I'm, I mean, my mind, my young mind is having a, a difficult time wrapping itself around this thing yeah and, and you're getting paid <laughs> yeah i mean i mean it just could not it, it was just it didn't fit into any like dream scenario i could have come up with did you feel pressured then so you know did you feel a pressure surfing with these people who you thought you know you got posters of these guys on your walls and then you're gonna surf with them and yes I, yeah, the short answer is yes. I was like terrified and intimidated every time I surfed with those guys. But but at the same time, you know, I was also realistic in the fact that, you know, there was going to be a double that was going to be doing a lot of surfing for me. And also I can surf and I, I was, you know, able to get at least enough of the shots yeah. that they needed, you know. Oh no, that that's cool. So did you did you get to surf all the different boards and you know the I did surf I did surf a lot of those different boards and actually I had it was a really some of those days were really fun surfing I I think at Makaha we, we did a lot of those sort of board switching surfings with me and Gregory and that was those those were really fun days. Yeah, because you got you got to surf that huge traditional Hawaiian surfboard, didn't you? That that that, that was actually you surfing on that as well. Like, how did you find that thing? Unwieldy and horrific and unbelievably heavy, but once it got going in a straight line, it was super fast. And 
you know, it really was that same experience as Rick was having in the movie. I was having like wondrous, like, oh, I can't just stick my foot in the in the water and it will turn. Like it was pretty fun. Oh, that's good. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was really cool. Like I, I can't like so, so much of the movie in some ways, as far, especially as far as the surfing went, you know, really did parallel my life at that, in that experience of being on the North shore for the first time. Yeah. I think I kind of come across as well. There's, there's like a, a like an, in, an innocence to your character on there, isn't there? And that's probably genuine, I suppose. Yeah, it really was. I mean, I, I was trying to, you know, my, my wife, as you know, in I, I would often ask my wife, like we would be somewhere and some restaurant or something in our family would come up to me and talk about the movie and how much it meant to them. And this is my son. And I've just shown it to him for the first time and like really gushing about the movie. And I would always just be sort of baffled by it. And I would turn to my wife and I would go, I just, why do they love it so much? <laughs> and, and she said, it's, it's because you are so sincere. It is so sincere. And she's talking about John and she's talking about me and like, and just what you guys have hit on. It was an innocence. I think of North shore as one of the last of the kind of an era of movies where it was an eighties movie at the end of the eighties, where it was still okay to have a movie that wasn't so edgy. You know, there wasn't a lot of edge to these characters. They were they were straightforward and sincere and trying to tell this story of, you know, a person overcoming great odds to sort of find out who they are. And I think those themes are like so rich through the 80s movies. You see them through all those, you know, family oriented, you know, movies that don't have this sort of dark underbelly. And I think that that's people as much as they might think it's sort of Pollyanna in a certain way, it is something I people do still actually crave. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just, it's just a simple watch, isn't it? You can just sit down and enjoy it for, for what it is. And I think that's what people like. Yeah. And even if you don't surf and if you do surf, you just love it that much more. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we were, we were saying to, to John about the surf footage in it is, is just amazing. And especially for that time with the equipment that you had, in that kind of surf as well like it's just amazing to get that footage yeah and he really he really spoke eloquently about those guys about don king and dan merkel and gary capo and they just really did it and and you did get and a lot of time i think also possibly i mean before that what did you have you had big wednesday how far back did you have to go to see that wasn't a real surf film like a, a documentary surf film that we all went and saw because we were surfers but like to the general public i don't think people have been up that up close to surfing ever yeah i mean since like you know big wednesday and then before that it was like gidget yeah yeah you're going yeah you're going right back then aren't you you know and it's yeah so it was it was real exposure that people like for the first time in there and it's really good like you said it's just incredible photography well i got a message off my friend after john's episode came out and he said oh the message said oh my god i just listened to the turtle interview um have you got north shore on dvd can i borrow it (laughs) (laughs) he's so infectious to listen to isn't he his love for the movie and luckily for me his love for me we are truly great friends and have been since the first 20 minutes we knew each other. Well, I think that um, it kind of came across on the screen as well. Like, like with, so there was your innocence and sincerity for, for playing the, the part. And then you and you and John as well, seeing you were friends as well. I think you could kind of tell that. And it's just so nice for people to hear that you guys are still friends now. Like that's what a great thing. It does really. Yeah. It blows people away sometimes. And I, and I always think like it, it just shouldn't be as rare as it is, but it really is rare. I mean, I don't have in the whatever 30 some years I've been doing this, you know, he's the longest relationship I have from in the movie business. And he's really the only, you know, maybe I have two other friends um, from other movies I've done that I, but he's the one who's been the most consistent. We've traveled the world together surfing and like, you guys might imagine, like, imagine if John and I like paddled out at your home break. Um, <laughs> this is a 
my like, God. People just, it blows their minds. <laughs> they just, they go nuts. You imagine going to the beach and you're stood there and you look to your left and there's Rick and Turtle stood next to you. you- <laughs> I know. It's like, and now I really see like, oh yeah, that would just blow people's doors out. Well, you definitely think somebody's just spiked my drink. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when did you, when did you first meet John then? Like on, obviously it was on that, on that film, but when? Yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe if it was like day, day two, or maybe John was at that dinner. I mean, like, you know, right off the plane. Right. Uh, or maybe not because, you know, I went a couple of weeks early to go and, and, and surf over there a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I mean, right in the beginning, right in the beginning. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I, I'm, I'm really, it's really nice that you guys connected straight away. It sounds like. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> and then was it soon after that film that you stopped surfing altogether or was it, was it a bit of time after? No, it was, it was quite a bit of time, but, um, I, I just, uh, like John and I did took some really fantastic surf trips together and he took me to like his favorite places in the world to surf and then we surfed quite a bit at home then slowly you know i i also had i got married to a woman with a very young child and so you know as you, i don't know if you i don't know if you guys have kids or not but if you do you know that it's not as easy to have to just bust out and go surfing yeah. when you have young kids um and uh, I got into some other things. I was really into golf and I was really into like woodworking and making furniture. And so surfing kind of like just kind of faded. And I also was having this sort of reaction to the to the reception of the movie. So I can't remember when exactly I stopped, but I stopped for a good long time. And when I turned about was about to turn 50 and I had I just had like. I sold my motorcycle. I, I like did some things that were like midlife. Yeah, I think so. Like I, I was like, you know what? I've been riding motorcycles for 15 years. I don't have a scratch on me. I think this is a good time to maybe say goodbye to this habit, especially in LA, you know, I don't know what literally an ad popped up on my computer screen for this like surf spot surf resort in indonesia and i was like wow wonder what that would be like and it, and i was also looking i was like wow it's a quite a bit different than when i was there 20 years ago yeah and i i just started sort of dwelling on it a little bit and looking at it and looking places up on the online and i called john and i was like hey would you want to go on a surf trip with me and he's like anytime you tell me where let's go and that was it. I started surfing again, and that was um, four years ago. Wow. So I was just going to ask, after like you're coming back from surfing from a, such a long break, how do you think that affected you, like mentally and physically? Well, I didn't just uh, sort of stop all sort of motion altogether. I did stay in shape doing other things. So it wasn't crazy. It wasn't a crazy, terrible like sort of reentry into the sport. Although, and when I, before I went on that trip, I did like, I was swimming every day and getting in really good paddle shape. But I I just have to say that the the biggest change for me is that I'm just having way much, way more fun surfing than I ever had. Because a lot, all of the, all of the macho male ego element of the sport is like, it's gone from me. I have no interest in being the gnarliest, biggest wave best surfer you know all of that kid stuff like i don't have it anymore yeah no, well and I, ironically i suppose um john john was saying that you're now surfing better than you ever have done <laughs> like say so, i don't know maybe I, maybe i am i don't know it's really weird i'm really enjoying it and i'm i'm surfing on equipment that's a little more forgiving so i i probably look better <laughs> you know <laughs> but um yeah you know there's there might be some truth to that yeah it's um it's it's a strange one isn't it is it's i don't know i think what you were saying then about the the macho ness it's not there anymore i think that's changed in surfing a lot as well i know it is still there and i suppose if you're in the high end of competitions and if you are a big wave surfer that macho machoism macho ness is for sure for sure yeah, but i think once you separate that and you can just have fun 
all that disappears and it's right. it's just about being with your mate or it's just about being on that wave and i think that's the thing that people can connect with i i do feel like the most i have the most fun when i'm surfing with my friends and it doesn't matter so much how good the waves are anymore i mean i want them to be as good as possible but a b grade wave with a good buddy is is as much fun as i need to have yeah yeah absolutely that's what we find as well yeah we surf some yeah well in the uk it's very varied like recently the last couple of weeks it's been going massive over here and uh <laughs> right <laughs> really good swell coming in but we can't yeah. get to the beach because we're in a, a full lockdown so uh it's uh it's a bit of a people who are yeah, like thankful it, you see all these photos coming up online you're like oh man come on so we've watched north shore about 50 times <laughs> <laughs> well good maybe it's at least some some re- reprise for you guys so is it the videos that i'm seeing online is like guys are still trying to sneak out and get a, and they're getting arrested trying to go surfing yeah pretty much yeah uh, that seems yeah. to be the case there's a lot of fines kicking around uh people traveling long distances to get to the get to surf breaks and yeah it's a bit of a shame we we we've said like we, we feel sorry for the locals don't they you know because they're kind of bringing the virus down with them yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. So it's, so it's we, we live a this we live about an hour hour and a half's drive from our main beach we normally surf at wow we decided we're not gonna travel and you're not allowed to travel anyway but yeah the police down there have been handing out fines to people who have been turning up from long distance the locals are still allowed to go in if you you know within sort of five miles or so 10 miles you're allowed to go to the beach still you're still allowed to surf and stuff like that but we're just that bit further away where we right. decided we're not traveling. It's not worth the risk. So the locals are getting uh, the locals are getting their spot to themselves for a little break. Yeah, for the first time ever. Yeah, yeah. and especially with the weather that's just come through and the uh, the waves that have just come through. There's pictures online, and I mean, if you look at pictures of the Cribar Reef in Newquay, it's just okay. an absolutely uh, mass madness. Mass, uh, yeah, they was, it was saying like <laughs> 20, 30 foot waves or something like that. It's oh yeah, okay. So I noticed recently as well, you posted a picture of a new board you'd acquired and you kind of broke Instagram because like everybody was sharing it. Oh, oh, was it a red surfboard? Uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, you, you bought a new board from somewhere. But... Okay, I was stand. Well, there's two pictures of me and a new board. I got one board's like a red sort of six eight, and that's at Channel Islands in Santa Barbara. Yeah, that I think that was the one that got shared around online. Of uh, yeah, yeah, load. yeah. I think I, I post I posted that on my Instagram. Yeah, yeah, and I think a load of people shared, load of different like surfers and surf shops and everything just reshared that photo everywhere. Yeah, I was so excited to get that surfboard, and 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 John and I did a little promotion for uh for channel islands for those guys for hooking us up was really cool yeah i saw you were part of a board giveaway or something wasn't it was it it yeah they were they they had uh, a bunch of north shore fans like fielding their favorite quotes of the movie and then john and i picked our favorites and the the, those guys won uh, you know a a whole package of channel island stuff it was pretty cool so how much, how how often now then do you get stuff? You, you know, you're walking down the street, or and you get some line from North Georgia shouted out the window at you. Or... I mean, you know, it depends. If I'm out a lot, it could be once a day. <laughs> I mean, it just depends. And if I'm in a beach community, forget it. It's got to be one of those things that, like, for both of you, especially like you said, if you go surfing together, like people can just be like, "What the hell is going on?" But yeah, you know what? Sometimes I think if we're together, it's less because people are so like their minds are blown, and I think they're maybe like a little intimidated to talk to us both, or like they can't believe it, so we're more like sort of freaks in a zoo. Uh, like they're just, but when when i know that john just gets it tirelessly i mean he and he he loves it and he handles it like a superhuman champion with grace and humility and but you know his character is so much more you know he's so much more quotable and lovable and like you just people just go crazy over turtle and so he gets up more than I do. 
So you for guys sure. never, you never kind of plan to go out together just to wind people up, <laughs> you know, just to, let's go to the beach and mess with people's heads. No, no, <laughs> we don't. It just, it happens plenty on its own. Um, there was no, there was rumours or a, uh, a thing going around online a while ago that I saw, which was talk of a, a, a maybe a return or a back look at the movie. Is that yeah. you've you've heard of, or is that just total online nonsense? I've heard I've heard through the years, you know, many different iterations of the idea of a sequel to the movie. Um, none of them ever took hold. Nobody ever really got very far. For some reason, I don't know I, if Universal just wasn't interested in making one, and they were not going to let anybody else do it. You know, I really have mixed feelings about it. I really have mixed feelings about touching that movie in any sort of way. You know, how many, I would just ask you guys your honest opinion. How many sequels do you think are actually good? And you, and forget, don't say The Godfather because it's the only one that ever mattered. So other than The Godfather, what <laughs> movie sequels like do you think have been worthwhile? Um, oh, I, I would say the Back to the Future ones I thought did quite well. Agreed. Back to the Future ones, yeah. yeah. And I think um, the only one that's really maybe, maybe Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I would disagree with that one, but <laughs> okay, the first yeah. one of Jaws, yeah. The second, yeah, no, not after that. There, um, I think the only one that's managed to do anything like that recently is Cobra Kai with the Karate Kid, but they've come at it from a totally different angle now. You know, right? Totally different animal. They're like taking the piss out of themselves the whole time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a different deal. But so the point I'm making is you're in rarefied air if you're making a sequel that does justice to or serves to like I so my here my feeling my fear is that I don't want to throw now that I've like embraced this movie <laughs> and and all that it's done for like this feeling of like just the way people think about it, the idea of making a sequel and doing anything to tarnish the memory of that movie is now like, all you're going to do is mess it up. All you're going to do is mess up the legacy of it because what are the odds that you're going to make a great movie? They're really low. They're really low in every category of movie making. It's hard to make a good movie. And if anybody could figure out the formula for whatever this touch of magic that that movie has, that has kept it alive for this long, whatever that secret is, if people knew what it was, they'd be doing it all the time. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's something like you touched on before. Like, I think it was just eighties movies. Cause if you go classic eighties movies, I mean, you can, well, you were in two, two more of those as well, you know, Team Wolf and flight of the navigator, but right. you know, you've got like Goonies, you've got, there's, there's, there's just you could it's endless you could just you know loads 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 of things like that and you just carry on going and they all had that same innocence there wasn't you know there's there's not loads of swearing in them there's not loads of violence in them it's just right. friendly, friendly fun and it's you can you can put it on on a sunday afternoon and you know just disappear for an hour or two and i think that's that's the thing about it that's the thing that's great about north shore as well and it matters it matters when you saw it. It matters how old you were when you saw that movie, like that it, that it has those effects so like like the movie for me was was Big Wednesday. When I saw Big Wednesday, I was like that that's why I started surfing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was the 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 age you are when you see those particular movies matters as to how deep that groove in your brain is cut. And we're all products of like the, you know, me for me, the late, you know, seventies and eighties, but those movies we saw at that time, the breakfast club and like, um, you know, those John Hughes films, they, they were so important, more important to us then when we saw them than they would have been if we saw them as younger, uh, you know, older young adults or even now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely true because of how North shore and point break has affected us. Um, and I, I've shown North Shore to, to my two boys, hoping it's going to do the same thing as well. Yeah. And they, they just quote you two guys all the time. <laughs> now it's pretty good. <laughs> good. It is, good. It's that, like you're saying, though, when you saw them, I think that age we were, and then like you're saying, that age you were when you saw Big Wednesday, that sort of age, you start to pick your own films, don't you? You know, you start to pick what you want to watch and what you're into. 
And right. That's why they stay with you so much. And, you know, uh, I think, like we said, I, you know, I asked the question about if there's if there was a talk of a number two because I've seen rumours of it, but... I don't think I don't think you could touch it because you can you couldn't go back now and I you, you just think what would the story be you know would, would mm. the turtle still be bouncing off the walls would you know Chandler still be doing the same thing would you know what would have happened to you when you've gone off you just couldn't do it I don't think it, it, it wouldn't work. well I get you could you could you could come up with any all the different scenarios that you would want to try to see played out whether or not they would be any compelling or not, or well written or well done, you know, it takes it takes so much, yeah, to make a movie, and it takes so much to, you know, to make a to to write a good story and to, you know, to tap into the thing that people loved about the movie. Sometimes, if you're trying to chase that, that's even more impossible, you know, because when yeah. they when the guy wrote the first, you know version of north shore he wasn't chasing anything he just wanted to tell this story yeah now there's now there's ghosts yeah that's it isn't it it's <laughs> I mean, yeah since everything now is like made for netflix and everything as well and that you know it's just straight onto netflix stream it all at once and it's a very i don't know it's a very different way but i yeah i I'm struggling with the, the the question the question that I asked and the answer you gave because I, the, as you were talking about, I was just thinking to myself, I, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. You know, a lot of people are surprised to to hear me say that, and I always feel like, oh, I'm the only one who feels that way. And you know, yeah. I think what it is is, is um, fans of films like that they they just want more of right. their favorite characters, don't they? They just want to see them again in like a different scenario, or whatever. Yeah, very possible. Yeah. So we we um sorry just going off on a, a bit of a different way a minute we we live about um thirty minutes from well, I think it's the world's newest wave pool at the moment and so we would, I was just wondering it's just like a thought popped to my head if you when you really mess with someone if you as Rick Kane turns up to a wave pool <laughs> you know to surf right right yeah, like, have you do you, is there any in LA that that you surf or um, not in Los Angeles. The closest one to us is in Palm Springs. Um, and uh, I think Kalani Rob is the, the sort of own, owns a piece of it or, or is sort of the spokes guy for it. Um, it looks like a pretty fun little wave. I haven't been there yet because uh, when they opened it, it was sort of right as COVID was kind of happening. And so, you know, I'm not going anywhere, but yeah, and then the and Kelly's Kelly's wave pool, the ranch is about four four and a half hours away. Have you been invited to that one yet? You know what? I have not been invited yet. Oh come on, Kelly Slate! I'm telling you, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, come on, doing? you have to have Rick Kane in your in your wave pool. That's I for mean, sure. <laughs> seriously, you'd think that's a no brainer. You absolutely have to do headstands on the board as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that wave looks incredible, and I would, I would certainly go as soon as I was invited. Yeah, and he'd probably get your name right as well. <laughs> they might, they might actually say my name right. <laughs> oh, nice one. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's brilliant. So, um, what a couple of like standard questions we often ask is, yeah. if you could only surf one place in the world for the rest of your life, where would that be? Oh, wow. I don't know. It might be, uh, God, it might be where I surf right now. It might be Point Doom, California. Yeah. 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 That's what, we seem to find that a lot of surfers say that it's, it's always their local break. Yeah. Local, which is and, a really nice thing, really, isn't it? That Well, how lucky. Whole world. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, because also if you answer that question, then you also have to think about, well, am I going to, do I have to live there? <laughs> so, <laughs> I gotta think, yeah, there's some places in Indonesia I'd love to surf every day, but I don't want to live there. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my home break that I'm currently surfing now, uh, I probably will be the only place I surf for most of the rest of my life. Are you going surfing at the moment or is that, is you're just not going out at all at the moment? No, we're surfing a little bit. Our, our beaches are open. We can go surf. And uh, we've just had a real run of like no waves after a really incredible January and a pre, like a, an okay fall. But we're, we're looking to 
my my spot's like a south south swell spot so we've still got a little ways to wait for it to turn on again but yeah i mean i'm surfing a couple days a week oh cool what's what what are you surfing at that spot like what kind of wave or what board uh what to, what type of board are you um you surfing uh, I'm, I'm riding mostly that that channel islands board that you guys saw in that picture it's like a great oh, cool. kind of kind of straight railed super fast board that's got you know some volume it paddles great catches a lot of waves it's a Right hand, um, you know, reef and point break. Nice. Oh, sounds, yeah. sounds like a dream. <laughs> it's a little bit when it's really good. It's a dream. It's a dream. And uh, have you ever surfed over in the UK? I never have, and I, I was. I, I've seen. I feel like I'm. I've gotten so much more exposure to it over the last couple of years in looking at, like, there's just so much video online that people post from all over the world now. So I feel like I've seen so much more surf from from the UK, you know, from like just exposure to, I mean, guys surfing in Norway and Iceland and Alaska and, yeah. you know, I didn't know all of these waves existed in these places and that people were there surfing them. Not that, not that the UK is so remote, but that the surf, you know, community is so vibrant. I just didn't realize. Yeah, I think it's been quite well hidden for quite a few years, the UK yeah. scene, and that it's... It's only of recent years of when like Instagram's gone mental, and I think it's it's that that people are now seeing it and going, "Wow, the, you can surf there in the UK, and like you know, you can go here and there." And uh, we were chatting to someone the other day who the guy who designed surf ears, and you know, they're to stop uh, to get stop you getting surfers ears surfing in cold water. Yeah, uh, he sent us a photo, and. Um, the photo he sent there's like ice everywhere and he's like i've been out for a surf this morning it's like oh my god that looks yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, surfing in sweet and i guess too like a lot of it maybe has to do with like wetsuit technology is gotten so much better that you can actually do it yeah 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 that's right yeah yeah well in in the uk the um surf culture and the community itself is is quite um yeah quite quite small i suppose uh, and everybody's dotted around. Like most most of the surfers don't live actually by the coast, right? But but you're all accessible to it because no matter where you are in the country, you're only I think it's like three hours from from a coastline, so it's all kind of accessible. Do you guys do you guys find that you'll travel a bit? Like, will you you go to France? You go to Spain? Do you do you get out? Um, well, hopefully that's something we're gonna we're gonna do in the future. Basically, the surfing for us. Um, was just kind of sat in the background for most of the time while we were doing other extreme sports um, for a long time. And, and then that, that kind of, we had a, an extreme sports website. Uh, and when that kind of faded away, surfing was the one sport that was left that we, we loved the most. So right. we still do it. So we haven't actually managed to, to travel around that much. I, I've, uh, I've gone to Tagazut in, in Morocco which oh, is wow. in, incredible incredible place um and it's like kind of not not as popular as other spots that you could go to so it's, it was nice and quiet when we were there i feel like i've only seen like there's a picture of like a crazy right hander that looks like snapper rocks in australia in morocco and it just looks packed yeah oh uh, right yeah well, well when we were there no it wasn't it wasn't um busy at all when we were there so we were really lucky but That's it's a, su- such a beautiful place what were the what were the extreme sports that you guys were were doing? Um, well, as as much as we could, really. So we've done skydives and bungee jumps yeah. and rock climbing and um, there's something over here. I don't know if you've if you've got it in America, which is uh, coast steering and gorge walking, which is like the inland version of coast steering and rivers. Coast, coast steering? What's that? Coast steering is um, when you explore a coastline just by jumping off of the off of the rocks um and using the waves the power of the waves to move move you around um move around <laughs> like the, the coastline and you go well, through not, like, like not in like la caves. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well but yeah m- m- maybe the swell here isn't as powerful so that's why we can do it here <laughs> yeah we you'd be jumping off of like you know a, a two and a half foot sand bank into sand in santa monica there's not a whole lot of uh <laughs> Yeah. pushing around to do maybe up north big sur that coastline 
yeah. Maybe people yeah. are doing it. It gets a bit sharky then, doesn't it, though? Yeah, sure it does. Sure it does. A bit sharky. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tad sharky up there. I, I, that put me off. When I, I was in LA a couple of years ago, and I was I went out on uh, one of the piers down by Santa Monica, one of the little jetty piers that sticks out, and uh, there was some guys uh, fishing off the end, and he's like, oh, I've got something, and he pulled this shark out, and I was like, oh, my <laughs> God, I'm not going in the water there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, you guys have your fair share of sharks, don't you? No. Cornwall and all that. Not really. No. Really? No, no, no. Nothing that's uh, nothing really that's ever going to rip your leg off. I think the last sighting of a great white anywhere near the UK was like I can't remember when it was. It was like mid to early nineties, I think, if I'm remembering right. And that was like way offshore as well. Right. Oh, I thought for some reason I thought uh, you guys had. You know, because the Atlantic Ocean's got plenty. I guess they're just all on our side. Yeah, you can keep them. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank. We'd like to export those as soon as possible. Um, so, what have you got? What have you got planned for the future? Anything at the moment, or the same as everyone? Nothing at the moment. <laughs> well, at the moment, really nothing. But I, I've been sort of. I continue to do what I've been doing the last twenty years. I do a lot of voiceover work. Uh, for movies and television shows. Um, in fact, like the last, uh, yeah, I mean the last 15 years, that's pretty much all I've done. And, uh, that work continues to be great for me. Um, so once that's back up, I mean, I would, I, I do quite a bit of this actually, which is I'm set up in my closet with my computer and microphones and I'm able to do some work from home, which is great. Oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. No, I saw you. Uh, I, I I was looking through your uh, IMDb page actually, and uh, doing a little bit of research, and I saw like I was going down, going Despicable Me Too, Epic Chronicle. Yeah, and I'm reading yeah. all these things. Then one of my come across one of my favourite Smallville as well. That was uh, yeah, yeah. I worked on Smallville uh, for a few years, the last couple of years of that show. Yeah. And you'll be happy to know Tom Welling is a really great guy. Yeah, if you like that show, he's a great, super, super great guy. Oh, amazing! Yeah, I know. did you watch? Did you watch the documentary on the uh, on that the chick that was in that movie or in that show? Oh, the um, the sex Nick Nixium uh, sort yeah. sex cult thing. Ali- Alison Mack. Whoa, yeah. man! Yeah, that crazy, <laughs> um, interesting <laughs> bit of watching. <laughs> Yeah, right. Makes you you want to go back and watch Smallville again, don't you? <laughs> you can have to explain to me because I haven't seen that. <laughs> yeah, I'll explain. You'll, you can take your answer off the air when we're done. He can give you a whole schooling on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. it was, it's insane. It's <laughs> yeah. So that's brilliant. So, do you want to tell anyone where they, if they want to contact you, find you online? Where, what's the best place to do? Uh, I have one social media outlet. It's Instagram, and I'm at uh, Matt Adler underscore. That's it. Yeah. Well, we really hope this year you get out and you do more surfing, and and you and John get away on some trips together and stuff. And uh, we're really pleased that you're you're back in the surfing world. Well, thank you, fellas, and thank you so much for your your love and support of the movie and and your interest in even, you know, just talking to me. It's really, it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, it's an absolute honor for us as well. That, that, All right, guys. That film's been amazing for us. We've just, honestly, years and years, we've loved it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks for that, Matt. Oh, I didn't call him Barney. I, was uh, call him. <laughs> I forgot to. You can't uh, call him Barney. Yeah. <laughs> He's not a Barney anymore, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. I really enjoyed chatting to him. And uh, yeah, you know, the love that he now has for that film as well, like he said in that, is uh, good times. Yeah, and I, I really love the fact that him and John are, are like good mates and um, yeah, it's like a, like a genuine friendship which kind of flourished on screen that we all got to watch. And now they're like still mates now. That's so cool. Yeah, I think you you touched on something in there when, like, you could see them becoming friends, and I think that them becoming friends in the movie was actually them becoming friends in real life as well, yeah. which came through. But every everybody that is a everybody that's a fan of that film, like, you would have wanted that to happen, wouldn't you? Like, oh, like afterwards, you think I hope they're friends in real life. Not only are they friends in real life, but they surf together still. You know, that's that's just 
the best possible outcome. Yeah, and you know, like like you said on there, would there would there ever be a North Shore two? I think that that is the perfect outcome that those two are still friends and they're still surfing together. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you, do you think they ever, you know, like you and me, Jibby Chever and stuff? Do you think they do it where like John will say to Matt, "Well, oh, look where he's going out." <laughs> you know, <laughs> we go. Nobody rides a twenty in a way. <laughs> Oh, they don't, they don't chip each other. Mine's all out of hatred. <laughs> oh, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Is that a poem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so that's it for this week's show. Thanks very much. Don't forget to head over to North Core and use the code SSUK15. That will get you 15% off anything you order. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. We did. Yeah, we did. Matt Adler. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming for the rest of you. (laughs) (laughs) Nice one. See you later. Bye.